Hi everyone, I am going to start doing the fur and the glow, or the glow and fur. <clears throat> With this technique, I think I mentioned um, it's one of my favorites because um, I like to add kind of that glow feeling to an image. So, I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm going to start with my YG21. And as mentioned on the, um, <clears throat> let me adjust my light here so you don't get too much shadow. Oh. Mm. Bear with me here, ladies. Okay, hopefully that will kind of help it. Okay. So as I mentioned on the, um, on the pages, I start out with my YG21 and I start outlining where I think that that glow is going to hit. And I'm thinking because his beaker is here and all this smoke, I'm assuming it's smoke <laughs> coming out of the beaker, I'm going to um, get part of his face. And the areas that are closer to the beaker. the beaker itself, of course. And just some areas here and there. Again, the glow is kind of everywhere, so I'm going to go everywhere and anywhere I feel that a uh, glow would be casting, well, the, sh the glow would hit. Now I know that a lot of people are intimidated with these um, steampunks and I can understand why it does take time and patience but once you have them done they really are a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in my smoke as well. Not perfectly yet just because I'm going to go back in with other colors for it. And at some point, it actually turns into his cloak. So I kind of, I do want to hit some of those areas, but not, all of this is not <laughs> part of the smoke. So I will just cover par uh, partial areas on there. And he might actually have a couple of smoky shadows as well. we assume that whatever is the closest to the beaker is going to have quite a bit of glow and so you want to cover those areas as well that's um, a big chunk of his coat but we will fix it a little later <clears throat> you might see some glow on his hair of course And of course on Mr. Hyde here.
and get some glow. Now I know I didn't do this on the um, page, um, the step by step, but we're going to try it just for fun. We might have a couple of more areas here on his fur. <clears throat> there we go. So basically you look like you just have a whole lot of orangey, or sorry, yellow glow spots. Now I'm going to move on to their faces. With um, the doctor, I started with E21. And I'm going to try not to drag out that YG21 just yet. color in his hands with the E21. Some of these areas are so small that I don't always go over them with the <clears throat> with my normal skin tones. I go from, you know, I start with E21, E11, E51, E04. Well, when I have small areas like this, I almost skip the E51. Not all the time, of course, but I sometimes do just because it's such a light color and we don't want to wash out that yellow. So for smaller areas, I kind of just kind of go over my darker colors with them more than anything. Small areas like the steampunks. <clears throat> all right. Now with um, E11, I'm going to start putting a couple of um, shady areas on his face. This is the side that he's closer to this. I guess he wouldn't have too much of a light area on this side as he's closer to, you know, Mr. Hyde, is it? <laughs> That's where I want my shadow to be more defined. Same with these, just a couple of areas here and there. We don't want to wash out that YG21. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to go back over it with my E21. I just don't know where I put it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here we go. Sorry. So I'm going to drag out that e, the E11 with the E21 one more time. Or, you know, not one more time. I'm going over it with E21 one more time, but blending out the E11 with the E21 for the first time. Now with my E04, I'm going to give them a bit of um, highlights. Or not highlights, but more stronger shady areas and it doesn't take much you don't have to do too many of them and you don't have to do them at all if you don't want to I just do it just as I like the look of it So his skin is done. Now I'm going to go with uh, Mr. Hyde. And then I'm going to start him with the BV20. And I'm going to cover his areas. All of his areas, um, his face, the whole thing. You don't need him to have too much shadow just because he's uh, meant to be a dark character.
I'm not going to cover the yellow areas too much. <laughs> Sorry, that's my phone. And I'll just ignore it for a minute. Hopefully it'll stop. Okay, I'm going to pause really quick because that's Rio. I'm not sure if she's done with work. I'm so sorry. Okay, sorry about that, ladies. I, I just got a little worried because Rio was calling me. She normally doesn't call me unless it's an emergency when she's at work. Okay. So now we're going to, um, we started with the BV20 for Mr. Hyde. And now I'm going to start giving him some definition with BV31. Now, for some reason, BV31 and BV20, they tend to sometimes blend a little too much, so you can't see the um, the defined areas or the tones I'm trying to create. You might, you probably will once you actually start doing it, but just trust me, they're there. <laughs> and that's not the end of it anyways. It's um, I'm still going to add one more color to it. Okay. And that other color I'm going to add is the BB23. Now that you can start seeing some really nice definition. got some bony hands. When I look at Christian's bony hands, I can kind of see a lot of uh, definition like you would here. That's kind of who I modeled it after. Now, I'm looking at my um, doctor, at the doctor, and I think I do want to go in there and blend it out with E51 just a little bit. And I will touch the shady, or sorry, the glow area with it and blend it out a little. Just like that. Just softly. Now I'm going to go back in with my BV20 and blend out that... E, um, sorry, BV23, just to make it a little more natural and not hard lines. 
I'm not blending it out too much just so I don't lose that definition from the BB23. Just a little bit. There you go. Skin tone's done. So now comes the fun part. <laughs> the longest part. We're going to start with W2 for um, his um, his suit. Okay. So I'm going to start with, as I mentioned, uh, W2 and I'm going to start filling in his clothing in the areas I want to be dark or black, black clothing. And I'm not touching that highlighted area just yet, or I'm trying not to anyway. Now, and I realize that this might be a little bit different than the original one that I colored. I've colored him three times, and each time, you know, it's impossible for me to get it exactly the way it was before, or the way it was the first time or the second time. So just, um, you know, get comfortable with it. There are no wrongs. Just have fun with him. And you don't even have to use my color combos. For his clothing, you can go with, you know, dark greens, olives, reds, burgundies, whatever you want. Again, I'm just showing you the basics, and hopefully you will take off from there. start his hair as well and I do just kind of nice simple flicks on there I don't touch the glow area with it at all just flick toward it and Mr. Hyde's robes His hat. Just everywhere you want that black to be. Now again, when I did this on <clears throat> when I did this on the coloring page, I had left out his robes and I went from dark to light just to kind of show you an example of the difference but I'm going to go ahead and finish him off with my W2 first I'm not going to follow the page pattern this time basically it it's the same result end result whether you go light to dark dark to light just gives it different textures I believe but you can certainly play around with it for yourself and, and find out what you like best. sure you can guess our guess not guessed <laughs> guess our next color is going to be W4 
And we're going to start our shading areas and making pleats and folds here and there. Try not to go outside the line like me. But if you do, just know it's okay. It's been the hardest for me to understand. It is my coloring, and at the end of the day, it's just for fun. If I go outside the line, I go outside the line. I know that uh, I've mentioned that so many times, and I'm sure you guys know that about me by now. I don't like going outside the line, but if I do, I do. And sometimes Abigail, when she's doing her when she's done her drawing, she gives you a couple of cheat areas where you know that um, would be the darkest areas, like in here, in this fold right here, this one. So that's kind of nice. Otherwise, you just have to wing it. I hate that sound. <laughs> My hand is getting tired. I don't know about you guys, but when I've been coloring for um, long hours, my wrist starts to hurt a bit. My wrist and uh, my fingers, it's just weird. And I've been coloring all day today, so this is my first image for the day. I'm getting pretty tired. <laughs> Thank you.
but I am very excited that we are nearly done and you guys will have a complete book and reference and videos and fun stuff I hope okay now we're going, going to apply W6 and again I don't start in any particular way as you can see I just jump around quite a bit It's what keeps me entertained. Just jumping around the images and not sticking to one particular one each time or a certain way. Although when I am coloring, I do stick to the first thing I do is skin. Except in this case where I started with the glow first just because I want to lay down that foundation. When I'm at this, when I get to this point, I'm kind of covering the W4 with the W6, but I am letting a lot of it show through still. Just because the glow would kind of lighten a couple of areas here and there and not make it just so black and matte. Coming along nicely, yeah? As I mentioned, I love coloring and then I get so impatient because it's not finished fast enough. Now, I'm not doing it here myself, but I suggest that when you do this one, um, that you take your time. There are so many little small parts that I keep going out of the line and hitting some of those. Um, again, I'm just rushing just because I want to show you how to do this technique, of course, and not keep you too long to where you're bored because it's awfully quiet, I know, and normally when I color, I have a lot of background noise. The music's going, my kids are talking, movie, something. But right now I'm trying to 
just teach you guys or show you guys how I've done it or how to do this technique or how I did this technique and, um, and so I've got it pretty quiet. So hopefully you're either coloring along with me or you have your own music in the background to keep you from going insane. If you're that type of person, I, I am, I need noise in the background. I think it's, I'm too used to my kids and everything going on that if I don't hear, um, I don't like silence, just dead silence. Not that it's dead silence, of course, because you can still hear the wisping of the marker, but it's not the same. You all know what I'm saying. Now let's go over it with the W8, and we're not going to go every or over every single line. We're just going to kind of give it a couple of defining touches here and there, because we're still going to blend it all out. I just want to make sure that it has definition where it should, like. Um, where the undercoat would be. He's got so many layers and it looks like a vest and a shirt that you want to kind of make sure that that's not lost in all that black. Yeah, and don't be intimidated. There is no wrong or right to these um, steampunks. You know, I get them from Abigail because I enjoy coloring them, and I'm hoping that everyone will too. Just, you know, have fun with it. Don't try not to think too much about it. When I first commissioned her, it was very simple, <laughs> um, to the point images. Um, but then I started buying some of her, you know, original artwork and stuff, and and it just kind of has been like that for a while. And when she does, or when I buy her artwork, it's a lot more detailed. But I really enjoy them. <laughs> She's just an amazing artist. And loving his little death shrouds here. <laughs>
Okay, so as you all know, I don't like those harsh lines that are left from the darkest color. So we're gonna go back and blend those out with the W6. And sometimes it'll get juicy on you and the only thing I can suggest when that happens is of course you clean out your nib and you just clean out the nib by stroking it a couple times on a piece of um, <clears throat> paper towel. I'm not going to blend it out too much because I'm liking how it's turned out so far. It doesn't need too much of it or too much blending out. Now for a final step on all the black, I'm going to go ahead and blend everything together with my W2. I'm not going to go all the way from the dark to the lightest. It's just kind of the edge of the W4, which would have been the second color. And just kind of mesh it together with that yellow glow. Oh, I'm so sorry, I forgot his hair a couple streaks of the W8 on, on his hair. There we go. Okay. Let me continue on here with my W2. I'm going to get rid of those harsh little streaks I did here. And that's what I'm doing is just kind of blending it so those harsh lines where the dark color ends and the light color starts kind of blend together and make it look a little bit more natural. And it is going to look messy, but that's okay. Once you, um, once we blend it out completely with the glow color, it will look a lot better. And that's probably the part I don't like or I'm impatient about is that, you know, as the process goes, <laughs> it's not looking right. Then you just have to realize it will all come together. <laughs> Well, just a couple of strokes here and there. I don't want to wash out those dark lines. Just a couple of strokes will do. You'll get the hang of it and the feel for it. And you can do it how you how you want. Went ahead and covered the yellow areas or went over them once with it with the W2 okay so now um, he's coming along as you can see we are done with the darker with all the dark colors basically now I want to go in and with my YG21, I'm going to go ahead and start blending out the, the, the glow and getting rid of some of the streaky parts and all that fun stuff, um, especially where I <laughs> went outside the line. You want to mesh them together, so go ahead and for this one I would do circular motion. like that. Circular motion, long strokes, doesn't matter. They all work.
Add a little more to his face. And his hair. Just all these little um, YG accents. You want to be careful just because that YG um, is light and I feel that the light colors will actually sometimes um, cause the other colors to run a little. I think it's because it's got the less, the, uh, the less pigment on it and probably a little bit more alcohol in it. So again, just take your time. It's definitely not a race. And um, the first time I colored this guy, he took me about three days. I'll just kind of walk away and come back to it. really mesh those colors together and try not to touch the darkest areas. There you go. So the glow is done. Now comes the fun part of finishing him up. Um, we're going to do the fur and the fur I started of course with E41. And I just kind of covered the entire area not exactly making it perfect but just kind of covered it if you miss a few areas here and there it's fine that's the fun part of oh i keep doing that every time i color this image i keep forgetting his neck is actually right underneath him and i confuse it for fur his hair is just so small. It's such a small and wispy area that I forget that sometimes as well. But you can always follow my guide and see where his neck goes and where his hair goes and kind of play around with it. Okay. So going back to covering the fur with the E41. And I do the whole area, not perfect cover up as much as I possibly can in a quick manner. And I'm sure I probably have this wrong because being the third time I'm coloring him, I think I just noticed that there is an actual feather and I confused it for fur. But again, it's not perfect. It's meant to be for fun. So don't stress. All right, now with the W2, I'm going to make a couple of long streaks. Oops. Chisel end. Okay. So I start from the inside, work my work, work my way outward very long and um, sporadic strokes, very imperfect. Just here and there. Fur is not going to have a shine, so that's why how I kind of figured that maybe giving him a couple of long strokes here and there it would kind of give a definition without it being shine because again for fur is not gonna shine. I mean unless it's mink, I think. <laughs> hey, I just made it rhyme. Yeah, I cracked myself up. Alright. So just like that. Now the last color for the fur is E43. And again you're just doing some wispy strokes here and there. And they can go any way you want. <laughs> I 
And there he's done. I feel that that just kind of gives it like the long furry hair look. <laughs> just like that. I'm going to go ahead and color in his hair. Um, I'm going to start with W4 again because it's such a small area. You don't need that much shine. I just kind of want to make sure that his hair is colored. He's probably a greasy character. He probably wouldn't have too much shine anyways, right? <laughs> Me and my theories, huh? That was W4, and I'm going to go in with my W8. And just give him a couple of streaks here and there. Very lightly. Just so it's not too flat or too matte. And there we go. So he's now done. Now I'm going to do their, the ribbon, the, I'm um, sorry, yeah, the ribbon in his hat and the scarf around the doctor. And this is the R20. Cover that area, look kind of pinkish, but that's okay. Zero 08 is next. And I'm going to cover again those shady areas. Areas that would be the most shaded. There we go. Now with my R39, I'm going to go back in and create a couple more shady areas or depth to that area. There we go. I'm going to blend it out with my R20 again. Just kind of bring those colors together. Very nice. I want to go the, over that those two areas again with my YG21 just to make sure that they blend well and it's more natural looking, more glowy. I see I've missed a couple spots over here so I'm going to cover those up. There we go. Okay, so actually they're basically done except for now um, we're going to go ahead and do our smoke. We're going to finish off our smoke, and with my smoke, I did the um, YG23 as accents, or accents, accents, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, again, YG23, I'm going to go into certain areas of my smoke and kind of darken here and there. Just kind of give it a little bit of dimension, some definition. Play however you want to do it, I would suggest you go, heck, you can do some really nice pinks with this image and with the glow. You can pretty much use any neonish color, is what I'm going to say, any neonish, you know, like a neon purple, neon pink, anything like that to create glow. And with um, Christmas coming soon it's really um, cool to see some of those images that people put candles to it or Christmas trees. You know. With, with glow, sorry. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. And again, I probably did not follow the exact guideline to, guideline as I did with um, the pages, 
but I just kind of want to, you know, show you guys that there's so many different ways you can start this and go about it. It's completely up to you. So very sorry I've got the sniffles or something. I think it's just the weather change. It goes from hot to warm um from hot to warm to cold to hot to warm to super hot again. It's just kind of ridiculous. I wish it would just make up its mind already. And there you have it. He is all done. <clears throat> I hope you enjoy this one. Um, it's a lot of fun for me. I love doing glow ones. It is it is time consuming, but again, the end result is really fun. So again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.